Welcome everybody to Forza Horizon 4 and today we're taking a look at the 1969 Aston Martin DBS. Now this is part of the uh, Best of Bond car pack and it was produced from 1967 to 1972 with only 787 being made which makes this rarer than the DB6 it replaced and, and also rarer than the DB5 as they were had production units of more than a thousand so uh, yeah very rare Aston Martin quite frankly and uh, yeah it was larger than its predecessor the DB6 with four full seats which you know makes it a proper four seater coupe as you can see making it really rather practical far more practical than that of the DB5 and it even has a uh, slightly modest boot which is somewhat negated by the spare wheel but still enough in there for a few bags and uh, yeah this uh, car was designed to have a more modern look with a fastback rear end and that squared off uh, front grille and uh, yeah even though it was supposed to be a bit more modern it did still have several Aston Martin uh, styling cues like that bonnet scoo scoop, the uh, knockoff wire wheels and those air vents with the uh, stainless steel bright work on the side there so uh, yeah a bit of a modern mix as well as a, a classic mix of Aston Martins and quite frankly I love the look of it might not be the most beautiful Aston Martin ever made and is certainly uh, one of the more overlooked Aston Martins especially from the 60s especially when you compare it to the likes of the DB4 and the DB5 but yeah I really really like the look of it it's not quite as good looking as the DB4 Zagato but it comes close and in some respects I actually prefer it to the uh, DB5 to be honest I especially like its side profile which you can see is as classically correct as you can get long bonnet short rear end and uh, layout wise underneath it's as classic as well rear wheel drive front engine and uh, yeah got a pretty decent engine under here as well now the standard car had 280 horsepower but this with uh, the Vantage engine option had uh, Italian made Weber carburetors which bumped it up from 280 to 325 brake horsepower it also has 290 pounds feet of torque from the 4 litre inline 6 engine and the car may well weigh 3,501 pounds which is more than the DB5 despite the fact it's dealing with uh, more power oops I do apologise uh, dealing with more power it's not dealing with any more power but it has more weight but it makes better use of its power as it's uh, yeah far quicker to 60 and uh, has a higher top speed as well so uh, yeah this was the uh, last car to be made under uh, David Brown's control which is what the DB in this uh, name in the car name stands for David Brown, DBS, and uh, that's what the DB5, etc., and future DB cars uh, are a homage to. And uh, yeah, it's a, a cracking Bond car as well. Might be uh, in the sh forever in the shadow of the DB5 because it never had any gadgets. It wasn't even in a car chase in On Her Majesty's Secret Service, which this car was primarily featured in. Uh, but it did have one infamous scene in that film which if you've seen it you'll know what I'm on about and uh, that alone is worthy of this car being not only in this game but also highly regarded as not only a Bond car but as one of Aston Martin's best vehicles plus the fact that it's a cracking GT car as it's not got just those four seats but it's really 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 smooth in terms of that inline six engine and uh, really rather quite fast as well so uh, yeah we're gonna go take this out for a quick drive and uh, see what it's capable of so uh, yeah let's get out there so yeah we might be having to deal with the snow etc but it's still a uh, pretty decent handling car even in these conditions and it's yeah a real easy thing to drive around quite frankly even in snowy conditions so uh, yeah that makes it a perfect GT car but if the mood does take you, you it will uh, easily uh, set your pants on fire because uh, this car is no slouch. 0 to 16, 6 seconds, 0 to 114.7, and going to 173 mile an hour top speed, which is pretty damn good even by today's standards, let alone in 1969. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty damn good in terms of performance. And like I said, if the mood takes you, it will uh, easily uh, do some oversteer fun like that. But this car is best driven sensibly, like a normal car really and uh, yeah because it is powered by an inline six engine which is quite large but also not mega high revving it's quite a smooth sounding engine only really has any loud noises coming from it when it's 
up in the higher rev range. And uh, yeah, apart from that, it's just smooth, quite quiet. But you know, when the mood takes you, it will uh, be more than able able to blow a lot of cars into the weeds, quite frankly. So uh, yeah, and handling wise, it's pretty damn good as well, even for a car from the late 60s. It doesn't roll around like the DB5 does. It brakes a lot better as well. And uh, yeah, it's just a real joy to drive. And I'm really, really pleased that they've put this car into this game. Hopefully it means that it will be in uh, the next Forza Motorsport game, so we can see what this car's really made of when we get up to a track. But even on this game with obviously uh, more arcade physics and having to deal with road conditions like this, it's still a uh, real fun car. And uh, yeah, definitely an underrated Bond car as well, because yeah, might not have been featured in any uh, car chases or had any gadgets, but it certainly uh, made a massive impression on me when I first saw that film. And I've wanted it in a racing game ever since, and uh, I finally got my wish thanks to this game. So uh, yeah, probably my favourite car from the uh, Best of Bond car pack, and uh, yeah, easily uh, one of the more unique and less loved cars from the car pack, I imagine. But hugely loved by me. So uh, yeah, if you haven't got the car pack, I highly recommend getting it because there are plenty of other great cars in the car pack. And uh, yeah, if you're a Bond fan, you definitely want it because you know. The cars are part of the series, they always have been and always will be, and uh, this is easily one of the best, even if it is underrated. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.